And so uh, I was sitting in Vienna Friday, being in the airport all day Friday. And I was doing some studying and reading. And I had a subject that came up in my heart. And uh, I believe it's going to be good for you. And it's something you've probably heard before. But we need to hear things again. You know, Peter tells us that he puts us in remembrance again. You know, we may hear something a few times, but until we really get it inside of us, it can't really have a good effect in our mind. And so, you be in agreement and prayer with me. That the Holy Spirit will give me the words to say. Lord, I thank you for the anointing that's on your word. I thank you for the anointing that is in every person here. I pray, Father, that you anoint their ears to hear. Anoint me to speak. Anoint the husband to be able to speak. Yes, I believe God wants to speak to you today. You know, something that, that seems to be a big problem with believers is forgetting their past. Now, that may not be a problem for you. But it had been a problem for me. See, because I know who I am in Christ. You know, I've been a believer for almost 40 years. You know, so I've been in church. I've been in ministry for 30 years. So you would think by that time, I wouldn't have a problem. But I found out the last three years that God has really been working on me. Because we don't know everything. At the time you think you know everything, you're in trouble. So God has been dealing with me in some certain areas of my life. You know, I, I finally found out that God really loves me. That was a great revelation to me. You might say, well, you ought to know that. I didn't know it in principle. I knew what the word said. I could preach it, teach it. But there was something that was missing. And that was that deep revelation of truth. That principle had not become a true reality to me. You say, I can't believe that. You didn't think that God loved you? Sure. I thought it was. But one day I was sitting in my office. And I was listening to some teaching on the computer. And something was said that said about God's love. And then I heard inside of me. I love you. Yes, For who you are. And at Sunday it was real. I saw it. Yes, I 
I saw it. Yes, they saw that. And it became truth to me. You know, I can hear truth over and over. Yes, But it needs to become a reality. And revelation. So from that day forward, my life was changed. I really believe in the truth. Yes, you know, Jesus said you know the truth. And it will make you free. You have to know the truth, and then the truth makes you free. Now, all of you know that your past has gone, right? Yeah. You're free from your past if you're a believer in here today. If you're not a believer today, you can be. Okay. But when you become a believer, you become free from your past. Now, we don't always forget our past. Make me sure more on my parents. And that becomes a problem for us. So I want to read some scriptures. Yeah, I believe the Holy Spirit is going to speak to us. Okay. In 1 Peter chapter 1. Araci Petros, Arachin Baluch. I want to read two verses. Araci Petros Mek, Das Nutu Tasnina. Imanalo Vorduk Vochte Apakanatu Arzatov Kam Voskov Perkvetik, Vorte Hailerit Tatak Anuris Jana Barnero, Apa Christosi Patvakan Ayuno, Vorpeste Ambi to Anarat Gap. Knowing that you're not redeemed with natural things, Imanalo Vorduk Azatvelek Vochte Banakan Banero, but you are redeemed. And it's by the blood of Jesus. We have been redeemed from what was in the past. That word redeemed means like to pay a ransom for someone who is in captivity. Before we came to Christ, we were all in captivity. We were bound. We needed to be set free. But you know what? Jesus paid the price. And then we have to accept what he did for us. We have to accept everything that he has done for us. It's like a whole package. But once we are redeemed, we need to realize we are really redeemed. You know, I guess one of my favorite passages is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through the end of the chapter. Because it talks about what actually happened to me. But I want you to realize something. You have been redeemed from your past. You have been set free from the things that had control of your life in the past. And my Bible tells me that when God forgives, He has already forgotten. Your past is gone. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5. Okay. Very familiar verses of Scripture for you. Okay, starting at verse 17. And we're going to spend some time here. Okay. Read verse 17 verse, please. 
կկարծեմ 17-րդ խոսքը Ուրեմն եթե մեկը Քրիստոսի մեջ է նա նոր ստեղծված է հներ անցան եւ ահա ամեն բան նոր եղած Have you ever heard that verse before Եթե եթե մեկը նախկինում լսել եք այս խոսքերը Yes do you really know it Իրականում գիտեք այս խոսքերը You need to probably quote it you know, I'm in Christ. I'm a new creature. Yes, Christos in me, Jim. No stepped button. All things have passed away. Hanel Nansa. And all things have become new. Amen, Ban Noria. We can say it over and over again. Mexa Carwin Kirkane. But you know, I'm finding that not everyone believes it. Բայց գիտեք հայտնաբերում եմ որ ոչ բոլորն են հավատում սրան։ They read it and they say it. Նրան կարծում են, արտաբերում են, but their life shows that they don't believe it. Բայց իրենց կյանքը ցույց է տալիս որ չեն հավատում։ They don't believe that they actually are a new creature. Նրանք չեն հավատում որ իրականում նոր ստեղծագործություն են։ When I study this verse it's like being something new being created. Եվ որ ուսումնասիրեցի այս խոսքը դա նշանակվել որ ինչ որ մի նոր բան է ստեղծվում։ Just like God when he created ինչպես որ աստված ստեղծեց երկիրը եւ բոլոր ամեն բաները ստեղծեց նրան That's what he's talking about here Այստեղ դրա մասին է խոսում Creating something as if it had never been there before Ստեղծել մի բան նշանակում է որ նախկինում դա չեր չեր եղել չկա It's like you never existed before Կարծես դու երբեք գոյություն չեի ունեցել Now I want you to think about that for a moment Մի բան մտած իր սրա մասին I was made so new It was as if I had never been there before. Yes, I'm kind of not here, but I've got this knack in my head. I've heard it said it's almost like a brand new species of something. Yeah, that got this. I'm going to jump nor me bunny. You know, like something brand new. I'm going to jump nor. And you know, when something is new, like a newborn baby, does it have a past? Եվ երբ որ ինչ որ բան հենց ամբողջությամբ նոր է, նոր սկիզբ է, ինչպես երեխան նոր ծնված։ Դա այնքան չունի, չէ՞։ Դաս բեբի հավ ա պաս։ Արդյոք նորացի երեխան անցյալ ունի։ Ունի։ Նո։ Վերի ինտերեստինգ։ Շատ է դարձքիր է։ When we became the new creation Եվ որ մենք նոր ստեղծագործություն եղանք։ We call it born again, right? Մենք կոչում ենք դա վերստին ծնված, չէ՞։ But to many of us that's just words. Բայց շատերից համար դա պարզապես խոսք է։ Born again. Վերստին ծնված։ Okay, born new. Նոր ծնված։ What was in the past is gone. Այն ինչ որ անցալում էր, չկա։ And it says in here, all things become new. Եվ այս դեր ասում է ամեն բան նոր եղավ։ Now we don't believe that. Եվ մենք չենք հավատում դրա։ We don't believe it means all things. Մենք չենք հավատում որ դա ամեն բանին է վերաբերում։ Because we always are remembered of our past. Որտեղ մենք միշտ հիշում ենք, հիշեցնում են մեզ բաները մեր անցյալից։ You know, we don't forget what was in the past. Մենք չենք մոռանում թե ինչ է եղել անցյալից։ It's hard for us. So that's good. Դժվար է մեզ համար որ թողնենք դա մոռանալ։ The enemy makes sure that we remember our past. Հակառակորդը ուշադիր է որ մենք հիշենք մեր անցյալը։ Because if he can get you thinking about your past, որ դեպի եթե որ նա ստիպում է որ մենք հիշենք մեր անցյալը։ He will hinder you from looking at what is ahead. Դա խանգարում է մեզ որպեսի մենք նայենք թե ինչ կա արջևում։ In Philippians chapter 3. Փիլիպեցիս 3-րդ գլուխ։ You know these verses. Գիտեք այս խոսքերը։ And I'm going to try to call. We'll come back here in just a minute. Շուտով կվերադառնա։ Հիմա բացենք Փիլիպեցիս 3-րդ գլուխ։ You know these past these verses. Եվ գիտեք այս խոսքերը։ We'll read verse 12 and 13. Դա երկու տաս երեք երրորդ խոսքը։ And 14. Եվ դաս 4-ը։ Okay. Good. Ոչ թե ես արդեն արել եմ կամ արդեն կատարյալ եմ, ապա հետևից ընկած եմ որ բռնեմ մրցանակը, որի համար էլ բռնվեցի Քրիստոս Իսուսից։ Եղբայրներ, ես չեմ համարում թե բռնել եմ, բայց հիշեցնեմ թե եթևի Եղածները մորացել են ու արջևի եղածներին են դիմում։ Նպատակը իմանալով դեպի Հիսուս Քրիստոսով եղած Աստծո վերին կոչումի մրցանակին են վազում։ The Apostle Paul was such a great man of God. Բողոս արանկալը Աստծո այնպիսի մեծ գործակիցն էր։ But he realized an important point. Բայց նա հասկացել էր շատ կարևոր կետ։ For him to be able to press forward 
He had to stop focusing on what was behind. You know, it's very interesting that when we're in an automobile, in a car, and you're sitting in the driver's seat, and you look in front of you, and there's a big windshield. So you can see everywhere out in front of you. And then you notice in the middle there's a little small mirror. And so you can look and see what's behind you. Right? Now let me ask you a question. Those of you who drive a car, what do you focus on? Do you focus on what's in front of you or do you focus on this little mirror? He said, oh, that's a crazy question. Sure, you're driving a car. But how many believers are sitting here staring at the rearview mirror and saying, what's that? But it's coming, I said, how about that tell the stats, if I do not know you. They're looking at the past. They're looking behind. It would be very difficult for me to drive my car looking into that mirror only. So as a result, I might run into something, have an accident. But there are so many believers that actually do like that in their life. Because they remember who they used to be. They remember the sins they were in. Or maybe you were one of those people who didn't have any problem. I had a bad life. <laughs> and I was in church all the time. But yes, i had experience with God. Yes, also it But it wasn't my Lord. But Because I still did a lot of bad things. You know, I just I, when I was going to church as a teenager, as a my motive for going to church was not pure. I would go to church because my mother told me I had to. Yes, She drug me to church all the time. Then when I got older, I had another motivation. There were a lot of girls in church. So I would go to church to meet the girls. So Sunday morning I'd come to church dressed up. And I had my church face on. Praise the Lord. Just as religious as everyone else. Go to Sunday morning service, Sunday night service. And then when I would leave church on Sunday night, I'd get in my car and I changed faces. Then I became like Manila. I was a bad boy. But I was in church. I was trying to fool everyone. But my life was not right. And I did some bad things. And I still remember that. You know, I remember the times that I was so drunk I couldn't hardly find my way home. Now that I was almost killed in an accident or two, once or twice. Because I, I was in sin. But then when I really became truly in relationship with I really decided that Jesus would be my Lord. You know, I really entered into the kingdom of God. I really believed with my heart. 
But I still remember my past. These things would come up that would remind me of my past. I had a struggle with that. It was difficult. Because I had been so bad, I thought, God could never use me. Yes, but that's my brass, but he picked Chicago of the Gorze. How can you use somebody like me? Inch Pes Garway, Inch Pes Mekin of the Gorze. You know, I could not forget my past. Yes, Chick or one whom Morana Limantiala. Then a few years passed. He told me Kanitar in Eransa. And God began to speak to our heart about ministry. Yet there is said, Mr. Terriet possesses our own chamber of a yard. Are you sure, Lord? You know, this is me you're talking to. You remember when I did this and that? He showed me so yes, say I'm nay um uh what are you talking about? He said. You remember? You remember all the bad things I did? No, I'm sorry, I don't remember. That's the way God looks at us. <laughs> you are a new creation. You became like a babe in Christ. And there are several scriptures that say that God forgives and then forgets. God has a memory problem. Aren't you glad? <laughs> he doesn't remember. <laughs> the only one who remembers, well, there's two big two that remember. <laughs> you remember. <laughs> and your enemy remembers. <laughs> and then people who are listening to the enemy remember. <laughs> But I have to be like Paul. By this bed, can you name Paul Osipes? He said there was one real important thing that he did. Now, so I make Karevur Banka Voranumen. Forget the past. Morana Mantiale. Because that is not you anymore. Morovete with Antialina, I live as Duches. We can take this a step farther. Not only forget the bad things, but sometimes we need to forget some of the good things. Oh, I remember so many years ago we had a great revival. Oh, I wish it was the same today. Oh, God, bring back that revival. We're looking at that little mirror. We're looking at what God has done. And our entire life is focused around the little mirror. But God is wanting to take you forward. So he said, forget the past. Oh yes, remember the great victories you had in your life. Yes. We need to think about those sometimes to encourage ourselves. But don't be so bound to the past that it affects your future. This is why people become stuck in their relationship with God. looking at what God has done. And it was so good, so they just sat down. And that was good, and that was enough. You know, some people are satisfied with the little bit. I don't see how, but they are. I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven. Lord, come get me. I'm waiting. Yes, Please, Lord, hurry. I'm still waiting. Yes, 
I'm born again. I'm going to heaven. They're stuck. That's not God's plan. Praise God, they're born again. But we're not born again to sit and do nothing. God gets us into the kingdom for a reason, for a purpose. But if we don't quit focusing on what is behind, it will hinder us in taking the steps forward that we need to take. But Paul said it's not enough to forget. I forget the past. Now I go forward. Going Forward. I'm reaching. Yes, forward. Trying to get the things that God had for him. And not only am I reaching, I'm pushing forward. And you cannot push to the place where God wants you if you're still focused on what is behind. Let's think about the negative side for a moment. The enemy loves to remind us of our past. Especially when God challenges us to take a step of faith. Just to give you an example. Jesus told us that signs follow believers. In Mark chapter 16. Okay. It said these signs follow them that believe. They do things. They lay hands on the sick and they recover. Okay, that's the Bible, right? Okay, so you see somebody that's sick. And it comes up inside of you, go lay hands on them. That comes up in your spirit, right? The compassion of Christ begins to rise. And you start stepping forward. What is the first thing that usually happens? A thought comes. What if it doesn't work? Oh, you, you're going to do that? Who are you? Remember when you... And his thoughts just come and come and come. What do we do? Too often we listen to them. And we don't act. Why? We're focusing on what is behind. So the person stays sick. You say, wow. I want to ask you, do you always act when God impresses you to do something? Don't hold your hands up. I just want you to think about it. How many, how many times have we failed to act because of something we remember? Maybe I prayed for 10 people and none of them were healed. That's in the past. So if I'm not careful, the past will limit what I have faith to do. Too many in the body of Christ don't do anything. I'm not talking about you. Because okay. I don't know you. But I've seen too many people don't do 
Let the pastors do it. That's what we pay them for. You know, it's not my job. That's the elder's job. Why do we do that? We don't see the right things. We don't see things through the eyes of God. I don't know where the reference is, but there's a reference in Psalms. It says that God will guide his people by his eye. What does that mean? That he is going to lead his people to see what he sees. I think How does God see things? Well, look at Jesus. It said several times in the Gospels that he was led by compassion. How can you be led by compassion if you don't see? You know, let, we need to let God begin to lead us with the things that He sees. He sees the sick, He sees the hurting, He sees the lost. And He has us to minister to them. So we have to learn to see what he sees. And then when we see what needs to be done, not let, then we should not let anything stop us from going forward. But too often the enemy will either show you things to, to say you're not qualified. Or he'll bring up your past. Or he will attack you with fear. Ooh, that's a big one. I have fought fear very often in my life. A number of years ago, uh, my family and I, we were living in Estonia. And I began to realize something. I was a, I was a missionary, I was in the ministry, I was doing good work. But there was a bondage in my life. And it was limiting my effectiveness. I found out that I was giving too much place to fear. I had so many failures, I was afraid. And I found out that I had given place to fear in my life. And then I began to see something. <coughs> Through a high percentage of my life, I had been in that condition. But I didn't see it. <coughs> and it was a hindrance to me. <coughs> and I gave place to it. <coughs> but when I saw it, <coughs> the truth about it, I saw that the enemy had, sn had sneaked into my life. And I gave him place to work. But then when truth came, it was revealed. So I began to fight against that. 
I began to fight against the memories of the past. The memories of failures. The memories of, make, of making mistakes. I began to resist the enemy. The Bible tells me if I resist him, he has to oh, okay. right. But that verse in James is where it comes from. It says the first part of that verse is submit yourself to God. Too often we forget that part of the verse. That means that I have to totally reveal myself and open myself up to God. I give them permission to show me what I need to do. And then when he shows me what I need to do, I know truth and I can act on truth. The truth was, I had fear of attacking my life. That was a fact. But there was a higher truth. When I saw what the enemy was doing, the truth was I can resist it and he has to go. Change my life. No longer was I given the enemy place. <coughs> but then I noticed a few years later, I began to see it come back into my life. And it was trying to stop me from going forward. I had not kept my eyes open. As a result, he stuck in. So what did I have to do? I did the same thing again. I submit myself to God. And resist the enemy. But if I don't have enough confidence, I can do it. Now, you know what I mean by that? If I don't know for sure I can, because I'm not sure, then I won't be effective if I'm not sure. What causes us to not be sure? We're not completely sure that we can trust God. One way the enemy works against us. He gets us focused so much on the past that we lose our confidence. And we're not sure about ourselves. And then we become unsure that God will actually do something in our lives. And I limit God in my life. Because I don't I don't trust me and I don't really trust God. I'm not talking about not being a believer. I can believe in something, but it doesn't necessarily mean I fully trust it. That's why it's so important to let truth work in your life. That you see what the truth really is about. You know, this, what is it, Romans 10, 17, it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Faith comes by hearing the word. But you have to go a step farther. Jesus said, Several times, 
So I began to, if we will begin to hear the truth, then we have to make ourselves do the truth. And as we do the truth, we find that it changes our life. And we begin to see, yes, I can trust the truth. And we continue to renew our mind. We continue to do the word. And then our faith increases. In us. And then, now hear me carefully. Then I come to a place where I really can believe that God will do something. I know God will do things for Pastor. Yes, I see it working. I see it working for this one and for that one. Yes, this one for this music But I'm not sure it works for me. I know God can. I know God will do it. But the problem comes. We don't believe he will do it. For I can have faith for you. But I have struggle with faith in and if the enemy can get us to a place to where we don't really trust God, we're in trouble. It's okay, we have we trust God for our salvation, yes. But we have to go beyond that. And the way that we can go beyond is to begin to forget <coughs> Start fresh, new. Because everything is new in your life. Everything is of God. Amen ban In your life now. And Never forget. Old things have passed away. What does that really mean? Well, Paul talks about it in Romans. I died. Yes, You died. I'm looking at people, I'm looking at a bunch of dead people here. Dead people? Yeah, dead people. Okay? You have died to the old life. The old man's dead. You are a new man. A new life. A new person. You're dead to the old. Let the old die. Paul talks about it more than one of his books. Put off the old man. Forget about the old man. He doesn't exist anymore. You're new. Do notice. I don't feel better. We're not talking about feelings. We're talking about fact. You died. Now you're alive in him. You're totally a new person. I heard that. Well, keep hearing it. Hear it till you believe it. The problem is we don't believe it. My pastor that was in a church years ago had a wonderful illustration. 
I'm a believer. Yes, The old man is dead. He Martha Merate. But then when I turn around, you see there's a chain. And I keep walking, dragging the old man with me. Every once while I turn around and look at him. Cut the chain. Let the old man die. Quit trying to resurrect him in your life. Let it go. How do you let it go? Sometimes you have to forgive yourself. We pretty well understand God's forgiveness. And we do pretty good at forgiving other people. But when it comes to us, <coughs> we don't forgive ourselves. We hold it against ourselves, the past against ourselves. God doesn't. But we think we have to. We must learn to forgive ourselves. How are we to forgive ourselves? Same way that God, through Jesus Christ, forgave you. How did He forgive you? Totally wiping everything away. Forgetting everything. No longer holding anything against you. You're totally free. You have to release that forgiveness in your life. You have to forgive yourself. I feel there are people in this congregation this morning. That the enemy has just been attacking you with your past. You may have had a very bad past. And the enemy reminds you of that over and over again. This morning you need to forget Submit it to God. You already have. Do it again. God, I release this. I know that you've forgotten it. Yes, Help me to forget it also. Then after you do that. Speak to the enemy. Because it's the enemy. You get out of your life. You liar. Because it is a lie. It's not true about you anymore. That old man is dead. That old man is buried. Never to be resurrected again. Like a brand new baby, you have no past. You're totally free from your past. Let it go. Because if you don't, it will hinder you from going forward. Paul realized this. He was a highly educated, highly religious man. But he considered it as nothing. Because he wanted to know the reality of Jesus Christ. He wanted to experience the life and the power of the resurrection. So he's saying, I had to forget the good stuff. It's not important anymore. There's only one thing important. Yes, That's what's important. 
Your past is not important. Stop giving place to it in your life. You get the message, kick it out of your life. I like doing that. Because every time I do it, I picture a devil going. Tell the devil to get where he's supposed to be. Where's he supposed to be? Well, not yet. But he's going there. Where is he really supposed to be? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put him under your feet. Not in your head. Free. 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 Act like it. You are free. Give no place to the devil. We give place to him in our mind. Because he, just because he throws thoughts at you doesn't mean you have to keep them. He's trying to deceive you by thoughts. You know what, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, I think. It talks about casting down the strongholds in the mind. And every thought and every imagination is against Christ. God won't do it for you. You have to cast them down. You have to resist the enemy. God will not do it for you. But if you submit yourself to God and give you grace, His power working in you, you can get the enemy out of your life. Are you free? If you are free. Realize it. Today, if you've been fighting this battle, I'm talking about You don't have to do it anymore. After but you are free. If you're having a difficult time with it, and you like prayer, I'm sure this we can pray with you. We can't do it for you as far as changing your thoughts. But we can release the power of God to work. And then you act. Know really who you are. First John 4 4. You may know what that says. You need to learn it. It says, You are of God, little children. You are of God, little children. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You have the greater one already in you because you're a God. Check me out. First John 4. Verse 1. Wow. Learn that verse. Devil, I want to take you on a Bible study. It is written. Greater is he that is in me than you. Tell him where to go. Go to the dry places. Or get under my feet. Get under my feet. 
That hurts me. Because you're resisting. If you need help this morning, we're glad to help you. Okay, and we'll, we'll have some altar time in a moment. But I don't want to close any service without being sure everyone is born again. Not everybody that comes to church is born again. So this morning, if you're here and not born again, what does born again mean? Receiving what God has provided for you through Jesus Christ. Coming into the kingdom of God. Amen. Let's stand and let's sing this song. 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 Let's sing this Let's forget the past.